Uh, hello, my name is Brian Lowry. I'm a columnist and critic with Variety. Uh, as part of Media Literacy Week, we are having this conversation here with uh, about media literacy and uh, are joined by what are uh, we, would, we would refer to as thought leaders on the topic. Uh, to my left is uh, Leba Geft, who is the director of the Museum of Tolerance. Uh, Mark Slavkin, the director of education at the Wallace Annenberg Center for the Performing Arts and Tessa Joles, who is the president of the Center for Media Literacy. Um, so Tessa, why don't you get us started? Uh, can you just sort of broadly define, when we talk about media literacy, what, what exactly that means? Well, media literacy helps us examine the whole idea of representation. How does media represent reality to us and how do we represent ourselves to other people, to other audiences? And so media literacy always involves uh, what we call deconstructing or critically analyzing media. And it also incorporates the whole idea of media production. And in that sense, media literacy has really become much more current because all of us are producers now. All of us have access to social media. All of us are really creating a lot of content that we can now distribute throughout the entire world. And so these new realities uh, in the world of ideas and in the world of communication has really propelled the need for media literacy that people didn't feel in quite the same way before. And, and the primary area that's being explored, or that the center is exploring it, is through uh, curricula, which would be aimed through the education system. So how, how did, just briefly, how does that work? Well, um, in a sense, the media is constantly teaching all of us. You know, we learn through media. And yet, at the same time, our education system really needs us to prepare for that world and to have the skill set that we need to be savvy media consumers, to be responsible producers, to really be active citizens who are capable of using media ourselves. And so it's very important that media literacy be part of the education system. But teachers need professional development, they need training, they need materials. And so we focused our efforts in the education system because we feel that that is the place where we can reach the most teachers and reach the most young people so that they can develop these skills of discernment that we really want them to understand. For uh, Leba and Mark, both of you, um, and you just take this one at a time, is to what extent do those values sort of inform uh, your work in terms of the events that you that you look to host and and stage around your respective venues. The power of words and images is one of the most central themes of the Museum of Tolerance, and it permeates all of the exhibits, all of the conversations, and much of the programming that we host here. It is a critically important uh, facet of the awareness raising that the Museum of Tolerance aims to do in an informal educational setting for all of the many millions of visitors who come here, including young people and the professionals um, and people of all walks of life from all over the world. The examples in history that this museum is able to convey illustrate how terribly important the use of words is and the responsibility of how we use them and the choice of words the consequences that come from, from the use of, of language. Um, and of course, one of the most powerful examples is the way the Nazis use propaganda so effectively, deliberately, uh, and manipulatively that those same tactics and techniques are still being employed today. There are exhibits that examine and expose the intentions and ulterior motives of all of the hate material on the internet. And as Tessa was saying, much of this material is presented in an apparently scholarly, erudite, seemingly authentic way. And if one does not know how to critically examine the content, one might not be aware of its origins, the agenda behind it, 
whose voice is not being heard in all of this. Um, so it is, it's absolutely critically important in the work that we do. And we don't have to call it media literacy if that doesn't appeal uh, to the audience, but the notion that words and images have power, that our means of communication is, is, is vitally important and has enormous consequences is fundamental to everything that happens here at this museum. It was one of the rituals in a performing arts center when people come and sit in the theater before whatever the presentation is. Um, there's a whole spiel about you have to turn off your cell phones. Um, and that's becoming harder and harder to do. That's a whole other topic. But my point is that to give people respite from an kind of unending overflow of information, to say for an hour and 90 minutes or two hours, you're going to pause and put your mind and your person in a different space that's more about reflecting and giving yourself more than two seconds to scroll through something. And then we would hope at the end, whether it's a theater piece or music or dance or whatever it might be, some time to reflect and make meaning of that. Um, and I think that's the goal. And I think it's harder and harder in the world in which we live we're doing anything for an hour seems almost overwhelming and daunting to people, let alone young people. Um, we, we would hope they, we had a show this morning, a student matinee of a show Wiesenthal, which I think is appropriate that we're here today. I saw it and it's um, very well done. And we engage the kids, and, and Tom Dugan, who wrote the play and performs it, engages the students for about 15 minutes in some Q&A, which I think is important. Um, to help them start to make meaning of what they've just experienced. Uh, but as they walk out, then they're all pulling out their phones. And I worry that they're not pulling out their phones to dig deeper about Simon Wiesenthal. They might be pulling out their phones to go back on, on Facebook or whatever. So I think the challenge for all of us who want to share information or experience that we think is of value is how do you create the conditions where people will focus and think deeply enough about it and reflect about it so that it can lead to some new wisdom or insight and not be part of just this constant flow of information that often comes and goes faster than we can process it and, and make sense of it. I don't know if I'm articulating that well, but I think that's the challenge. We now have this democratization of information like never before, and I think an acute shortage of wisdom and insight. And I think the role of schools in general and this idea of media literacy in my mind how do you create wisdom and insight from this amazing wealth of information that makes us smarter and wiser as a people, not more dumbed down or more overwhelmed? 